What's up guys, Boop here. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be looking at how every single team in Europe won their FNCS game. Before we start analyzing and looking at how they won their games, it's important to note that six different teams won a game in the finals. Five out of six teams had a launch pad at some point in the game. One team out of the six actually got 50-50 and three of the teams actually got 50-50 quite close to them. And lastly, two out of the six teams got uncontested off spawn. Mr. Savage and iDrop won the first game of FNCS being uncontested at the Grotto. Their drop spot is generally on the dead side of zone and they got first zone, meaning they took control of all the mountains on the right side of the map. Their game starts off with a pretty damn nice snipe from Savage, which allows them to push up towards this bridge and fight this team here until third zone. As third zone started to close, they box up on the edge of third zone, trying to get a little bit more elevated on their positioning. As fourth zone appeared, they made a really good choice to go behind the bridge towards the least congested side of zone. This puts them in such a good position for 50-50. If they'd chosen to rotate towards the congested side of zone, they would have certainly gotten held. 50-50 is very close to them and they choose to move as soon as storm starts moving. This gives them the least likely chance of getting held as high ground is going to be focused on launch patterns and people rotating across the water. In the end, this works out for them as high ground is super focused on everyone rotating that they don't realize that there's a team moving behind them. Savage gets a snipe and they get high ground on 50-50. They keep height pretty much standardly. One person at the front of the top, the other person at the back of the top with the person with the power weapon at the back of the top, which allows them to help out the person at the front of the top if they ever get contested from height. They always focus second height with double RPG and just end up winning the game from there. Game number two was won by Mage and Castry with 11 kills. They do a split drop between Lumber and the little beach on the left side of the map. This game they ended up going towards Weeping Woods in order to find some Storm Surge tags and end up getting a few kills along the way. Going through Weeping Woods quite early is very beneficial since there's not a lot of angles for people to shoot you at, so you can make this rotation pretty free and easily. These two kills helps them get a launch pad, which helps them later on through 5th and 6th zone, and a lot of extra mats which helps them top into zone. This central positioning ends up getting them the next few zones, and then through 4th zone, they had to launch pad to get to the other side. They end up finding a nice little impact frag through the middle of 6th zone, and just keep on playing that same level throughout the entirety of this game. Towards the end of nice zone, they ended up running out of mats, and both committed to Logan at the exact same time, forcing the option so that they don't get sandwiched between two teams. At the end, there was a 2v1 situation, and they end up making a huge mistake over committing for a kill, and end up getting lucky and RPGing this last player down. With the amount of rockets they had left, they should have focused on bringing this player down to their level, but instead they almost threw the game. Game number 3 was won by Rifler and Slicks with 5 kills. They both land on top of the henchman base with heavy snipers near craggy cliffs and they were uncontested. The loot path including getting to the slope truck below and getting full shield as well as getting orchid uncontested, meaning they had an insane amount of loot available to them during the early game. Mid game was pretty unimpressive, they mostly stuck to high ground positions and waited for the next zone to appear and rotated accordingly. Interesting to know here is when they boxed up on top of this reformable house, they ended up building the top out of metal first in order to signify strength to the other players, and then ended up farming out the rest of the materials below. From this position onwards, they got every single zone, including 50-50, and pretty much could chill until 7th zone. Towards 7th zone, some really good tarping here by Rifler in order to get to the front side, also known as the dead side, of this first moving zone in order to get ahead of all these players and to find potential impact frags. Height ends up getting RPG'd and killed by another team and all of a sudden they notice this and take high ground and pretty much win the game from there. Game number 4 was won by Bad Sniper and Nyrox. They were uncontested landing Lazy Lake and could pretty much stay in Lazy Lake for the entirety of this early game to mid game. The first time they didn't get zone was actually 50-50 which is absolutely insane. They waited until a storm started moving and found a recycled launch pad in order to get to 50-50. When they landed from this launch pad, they end up taking high instantly for 50-50 and holding it for the rest of the game. It's actually really smart here to show that you have an RPG on height because it signals to the other teams that they do not want to take back high ground from a team with an RPG. 
This is called lobby signaling and it's important to do because it forces other players to make different choices and different decisions if they know what kind of inventory you have. From this point on they got first moving zone and the hill pool towards a hill at the end giving them the free win. Game number 5 was won by Refscard and Scram with 9 kills. They land steam stacks and had to actually split the loot path with another team. The mid game rotation weren't that interesting, they ended up rotating towards the top side of zone, down towards frenzy and through risky reels, which is fine because they went early on into the game since zone was far, meaning that there's less likely chance that people are there contesting them. Impact frag at the start of 50-50 gives them enough mats to tunnel into 50-50, giving them a pretty free rotation. First moving ends up bouncing back towards them and it gives them a pretty free rotation for the entirety of the zone. At the end of 8th zone, they look at high ground and end up taking it with a forceful launch pad retake, which is interesting since they had 11 rockets which could also force their opponents down. I believe the player was to land into zone and RPG their opponents down, however I feel like they could have wasted their opponents mass by constantly forcing RPGs since they had 11. From this point on, they win the game with those 11 RPGs. From this point on, they end up using 8 of those RPGs to win the game. The 6th game was won by Wakey and Snappy who land oil rig and they were actually contested off spawn and had to win the spawn fight in order to get through this game. What's interesting about the 3rd zone rotation is that they actually make a really forceful 3rd zone center play which means that they make an easy rotation early on into game giving them less likely chance of getting held or shot at by other teams. Crossing the water here by agency later on into the game is basically a death trap, so they realize this, make the play early on, and get a great positioning. They end up not getting 50-50 and make a really greedy play shooting at the team in front of them, forcing them to build for them so that they can save a launch pad. However, this ends up backfiring on them and the entire lobby starts spraying at this area of the map, forcing them to use a launch pad in the end don't end up getting first moving however make a really good positional play to get to the front to minimize RNG later on in this zone. It actually allows them to save mats in the long run since they could just walk first moving zone without actually getting sprayed by anyone. Nice impact frag through the middle of 7th zone allows them to get a refresh on mats and it gives them the chance to look at high ground. This ends up getting snappy. The ability to snipe Kobe is horny. What the hell? Off of high ground and winning the game from there. At the end, they ran out of mats in the 2v2 situation. Snappy ends up trying to make a play, but it didn't work out. Wakey comes in later on with a huge bow shot to kill both of the opponents at the same time and win the game. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you guys for the next video. See ya!